So today I need to go through some changes that Microsoft have announced to their 365 subscription licensing. These changes take place from the 1st of March 2022 and do need you to make a choice for your licensing moving forward before March. Although if you don't let us know, we do have a default that we'll put you on until we do manage to speak to you. We'll also be communicating these in a special email newsletter to our clients. This video will be available on our website and our YouTube channel, and we'll be contacting managed clients that will be most impacted by this as well. I guess it's important to point out that these are Microsoft price increases, not Systemagic ones. So while I'd encourage you to get in touch with any questions for clarification, please don't shoot the messenger because we can't do anything to stop these price increases. So the first change to make you aware of is a simple and fairly inevitable one that was always going to happen one day. Microsoft have announced that six license sites will have a price increase from the 1st of March this year. As you'll see in the table, these are the Business Basic, Business Premium, Microsoft E3, Office E1, Office E2 and Office E3 licenses. If you aren't sure if you've got these license types, then your monthly invoices show exactly what licenses you currently subscribe to. And you can also give our help desk a ring or an email and they'll be able to let you know. So this is the first price increases to these licenses for about 10 years. And in that time, Microsoft have added Teams and a whole host of other extra features. So a price rise eventually was always on the cards. I don't personally agree with some of the percentage increases, they do feel a bit high, but compared to other similar services, they do still represent good value. To give you an example, a hosted exchange mailbox with other providers can cost seven or eight pounds. So the business basic license that gives you email and Teams and SharePoint and the online office apps is still really good value at £4.56 a month. So the next change is the one that's a lot more important and we do need you to make a decision. Until now, one of the major benefits of Microsoft's 365 licenses has been that they're completely flexible and they're on monthly terms. From March the 1st, Microsoft are changing the license term options and it's something I've been actively campaigning against to Microsoft for over six months now. I'm very strongly against the changes, as are almost all Microsoft partners. But at this stage, it is what it is, and it's important that we explain the new choices to you. So option one is that you stick with your current monthly flexibility. This means you can increase and decrease licenses whenever you need to, and your bill will increase or decrease the following month, exactly like it always has done. After the 1st of March, this option will incur a 20% price premium, but I'll go into that more in the next couple of slides. So Microsoft say that the majority of cloud software providers already have annual terms, and that's how they're justifying this price premium. Option two is that you commit for 12 months for your licenses. This avoids the 20% price premium, but remember, if you use any of the licenses on the previous slide, then the price is still increasing after the 1st of March. If you choose this option, we'll invoice you up front for 12 months at the beginning, and then during those 12 months, you can still increase licenses if you need to, but you can't decrease or downgrade licenses. Option three is that you commit and pay for three years, but I don't really understand why anyone would do that, so I'm going to skirt over that option for now. Obviously, if you are interested in paying for three years at once, then do let us know and we'll arrange it for you. So I said you can opt to keep paying monthly, and this is our recommended option too. This is what everyone's been doing up until now. The downside is that you'll incur a 20% price premium on all licenses, and also Microsoft are making noises about some licenses possibly not being given a monthly option. So if we hear more, we'll let you know and we'll update this video. So I believe that almost all clients will gain the 20% price premium back by being able to reduce licenses when they need to. So for example, if you have a member of staff leave and you don't manage to replace them for a couple months, you'll save anything from £4 to £40 a month by not paying for their license during that period. 
If someone goes on maternity leave, you can potentially save nine months or even more of that licence fee. So these savings outweigh the 20% price premium in almost all cases. Sticking with the monthly flexibility also means you continue to pay monthly rather than having a fairly hefty upfront bill once a year. And it also means that we can change your license type if your requirements change, either to add or remove features. At System Magic, we've spent 23 years telling businesses that being tied into a 12 month contract term for any IT service is a bad idea. And the reasons on this slide are just as valid for this Microsoft licensing change as they've ever been. To illustrate the price premium, I've added a column to the table we looked at in the standard price increases part. So it's worth noting that the price premium applies to all licenses, not just the six shown here. So if you use business standard, for example, your price will rise from £9.40 a month to £11.28 a month. But it's important to note that the licenses that are being affected by the price increases are also affected by the price premium if you choose the monthly billing option. I hope that makes sense. At this stage in January, we still haven't even had confirmed UK pricing. So the prices I'm giving here are based on what Microsoft have announced in the US, and we're assuming that the percentage price increases will be the same over here. You can opt for an annual subscription option instead. I'd recommend this only if you're confident that your team size will stay the same or grow and that your license requirements won't change. Mm -hmm. So you aren't planning any major changes to your business or the way you work during 12 months. You'll be charged up front for 12 months for all your licenses and you don't have to pay the 20% price premium that the monthly option incurs. We can still upgrade and add licenses during the 12 months, but we can't downgrade or remove licenses. And there's no way around this and Microsoft are making it very clear that once you commit for 12 months, that's it. As I said on the previous slide, we aren't recommending this option, but I understand that there might be some clients of ours who have a certain number of staff, they've always had that number and always will do because that's what their business requires, and they've got the cash in the bank to pay up front for their licenses. So in that case, it might make sense to pay for 12 months and avoid the 20% price premium. For the majority of our clients though, we really do think that the monthly option is the most sensible one to choose. To recap then, Microsoft pricing for Business Basic, Business Premium, Microsoft E3, Office E1, Office E2 and Office E3 licenses is increasing from the 1st of March. All Microsoft 365 users need to decide whether they want to stick with monthly flexibility for their subscriptions or move to an annual or 36 month subscription. If you opt to stick with monthly, there'll be a 20% price premium added from the 1st of March. We're recommending that all clients retain their current flexibility by continuing on a monthly subscription. And as I said at the outset, these license prices and premiums are Microsoft ones, not Systemagic ones. So we can't change or cancel them, but please do get in touch with us if you'd like to discuss the changes. We can give you all the detail that we have.